uh, please uh, accept my apology for uh, being a little bit late. Um, it's one of those uh, one of those days, I guess I'll say. But uh, thank you. So I think they're all those days now. <laughs> it does um, seem that way. You know, we have we have really nothing going on up in Albany. So. And the trouble with Zoom is that everybody can see the count the clock on on the screen. Well, hi, I'm Martha Robertson. We met uh, met on um, that that NISAC lobbying call a couple yes. of weeks ago. So. Yeah. I'm the um, uh, legislator from the western half of the town of Dryden. So you are actually um, uh, my state senator. So it's wonderful to see you and, and have this chance to say hello. Why doesn't everybody else go around and, and introduce themselves? Henry, why don't you go next? Yes. Hello, Senator. I'm Henry Granison. I'm a kind of legislator from the 3rd District, which is within the city limits. It's <clears throat> called Cornell and somewhat of, of Ithaca College. Good afternoon, Henry. Thank you. And I'm I'm going to leave this unless our chair of the legislature comes. I'm, I'm chair of the Intergovernmental Relations Committee, so that's my excuse for like starting this off. So, Mike, you want to go ahead? Hi, I'm Mike Lane. I'm county legislator from the uh, east part of the town of Dryden, including the two villages, Dryden and Freeville, and that's within your district. Michael, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Rich. Hi, I'm Rich John. I represent uh, the city and I apologize. I'm only going to be on for a few minutes, but I wanted to say hello. Thank you, Rich. Annie. Hi, Senator. I'm, I'm Annie Corman. Uh, my district is uh, town of Ulysses on the western uh, side of the of the uh, Tompkins County, Trumansburg area. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Anne. I'm also uh, the chair of our uh, planning Energy and Environmental Quality Committee. Excellent. And uh, Mike is chair of the uh, Facilities and Infrastructure Committee. Rich is chair of our Public Safety Committee, and Henry is vice chair and and of Public Safety. And they're deeply involved in the reimagining public safety <coughs> uh, initiative. So, um, so uh, first, first, I should ask, how long do you have with us today? Uh, my next. Let me check my next Zoom here is at um, actually I could get probably about like 115 ish 1 120 if that if that would work um, That's nice. if that would work yeah I and we could maybe push it even as far as 130 but uh, I I can you know I'm kind of moving everything that way anyway so uh, let's just say you got me to 130 how's that <laughs> All right, that's very generous. Thank you so very much. We appreciate sure. it. Sure. And uh, we sent over an agenda and, and a whole ream of attachments yep. uh, last night. And so maybe we can kind of go through some of those. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the big issue is the budget. And um, you've got uh, you've got our items there. And we're uh, we're pretty pleased with what the Senate has has put together uh, with restoring the five percent withholding uh, on the state that the governor had um, had been doing. Uh, we are a little concerned about community college funding. Let me turn it to Mike, who is our liaison to the to TC three. Very 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 important uh, part of our local economy. Uh, it certainly is. Uh for not only the education of uh, young people and, and other folks in our community, but also in, in the surrounding counties particularly, but also uh, it is uh, uh, the economic development driver for a lot of Thompson County. Uh, it's in your district, it's in Dryden, and uh, we uh, are really concerned about some uh, discussions about uh, the community colleges and how they might fund them uh, the difference between FTEs and headcounts. And we do a lot of uh, education of part-time students. And, uh, you know, you may have three or four students that equal one FTE. Uh, so we need the, uh, the advantage of getting the, uh, the, the full payment uh, to the community colleges and not just, uh, not just the, the combination. Michael, you're 100% right, and and you know, sitting on higher ed uh, committee as well, 
And I, I kind of equated this to, to the telehealth issue that we've been, you know, dealing with back and forth as well, where, you know, um, it, it still takes, uh, how should I say it? It takes almost the same amount of time, whether you're in person or if you're in, you know, telehealth. Oh, yeah. um, I, I look at this being the same way, um, you know, with, with a part-time student. And, and let's be honest, I think that's kind of has, has been somewhat of the, uh, I won't say the allure, but, but, but um, to, to having a, a community college like that is uh, it does fill that very important need for those that maybe can only, you know, uh, due to time or whatever, go, go part-time. So um, I'm in full agreement. I, I'm going to be the advocate for, uh, uh, for, for the funding for that. And, and you hit it right. I, I'm feeling right now, you know, we say economic development. And the term that I like to use is economic st stability. And, and I think that should be uh, where we focus coming out of COVID is let's stabilize all of those institutions, all of those entities that emanate out into our communities that will do the economic stabilization of it. And I think uh, the higher learning, uh, the community colleges, colleges in general uh, do just that. So I would say if we were to even take uh, an approach of like a year or two of, of, of not what we would say is economic development, not looking for somebody outside. Sure, they're there, but you know, it comes with all the other strings attached, but let's, let's look at stabilizing it. So um, I, I will be an advocate for, for, uh, for moving for the funding. Um, EC3 has always been a leader, whether it's in the remote learning or uh, uh, the uh, co-curricular with the high school students. Uh, it's also uh, been working the last two years on trying to reinvent uh, the way it's going to deliver education is called the Guided Pathways uh, Initiative, in which it's going to try to uh, to move toward helping people with micro credentials, credentials, for example, for work related things, so that everyone they, it, it's just recognizing that everyone isn't going to be an 18 year old going in there for two years later getting a degree, and uh, but yet they have to have success, even if they're only in for a few weeks to. Uh, uh, help them with their uh, uh, their job at uh, an industry or a, a business or something like that. And, and Michael, thank you. You know, I'm going to be uh, working my way out that way in, uh, to Dryden in, in, in and around May. And, and what I'd like to try to do is uh, see if we couldn't potentially work that in where I could uh, just do a quick, I, I've never been to, to, to TC3. So uh, it would be a great opportunity to uh, come out and visit. Be glad to work with you and, and work with uh, President uh, Montague and uh, her staff. To, I'm sure they'd be thrilled to have you visit. Thank you. I'll, I'll follow up with you on that. Thanks, Michael. That sounds like a must do. I, I, absolutely. I was going to say you should come and visit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, we just lost Rich. I was thinking we should go to public safety. Um, we do have a number of things there. Um, <clears throat> But actually, Lisa Holmes is coming in. She's our county administrator, <laughs> deputy county administrator. This is Senator Peter Oberacker. Good afternoon. It's nice to meet you. I apologize that I'm late. Uh, Lisa, no apology. I was, believe it or not, I was a couple of minutes late myself. So oh. it, seems, it seems to be the world that we're living in. So, yes. uh, you know, not a problem. Nice to meet you as well. So um, we were, uh, we, we can, we can, Lisa, were you on till like 115, 130? Cause we. Sure. I, I have all the time now. Okay, great. Cause we can come back to public safety. Lisa, Lisa has been involved in the public safety issues that we were talking about. Um, I did want to um, uh, sort of go a little bit through some of the budget things here as well. Sure. Uh, just feel that the, um, you know, the, I know that the, <clears throat> the AIM funding that diversion, and you were in county government. Correct. Former you were former, on, uh, former Otsego County legislator. Yes. Right. So, uh, so you you know how that feels when when the governor comes along and says, "Here, we'll we'll take some of that." I, I won't use the often uh, used um, Bill Clinton. I feel your pain, but I do. And uh, <laughs> uh, believe me, I I uh, and again, you know, this is just um, you know, this was that. Oh, I don't know if it's a. I call it a disconnect between the, the top down versus a bottom up type of scenario. Um, I, I do know both from a, from a municipality, you know, being a former town supervisor and, and so on and, and county legislator, it just, it irks me that when uh, they, 
<laughs> I use the word play with these things. You know, they, they just, they do it sometimes, I think, just to, to, to raise your blood pressure. But um, so, yes, you're right. I fully understand the importance and more, and more importantly, the need for the, um, for the AIM uh, funding. So, again, I'll, I'll be an advocate uh, uh, to push forward on that uh, issue as well. So we appreciate that the, the Senate did support that. Yeah. Um, there's one specific bill that we're we're looking Mark, at. Mark, I don't want to want to sidelag too too far, but uh, since you were a county legislator, what what committees were you involved in on the county? So I was the chair of public works. Um, I sat on our intergovernmental. I sat on the budget. I was uh, deputy chair of our administration, which was like Ways and Means. And I said on uh, public safety. Wide variety, thank you. <laughs> uh, as I said, if I was a dog, I'd be a mutt. I had a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, variety there. So, well, I think I think we kind of all get used to being generalists like that. That you do have to have a lot of different hats. Yes. Um, and I see you're on the education committee and health as well. And so the next issue. Uh, not next, but I'm just kind of picking and choosing down our list here. But the um, the early intervention bill, um, the that's the Reichland Melnick and the yep. you probably were aware at a county level of of the issue of the covered lives of insurance companies not supporting yep. um, EI services. So that's a very important piece of legislation. If, if that could be moved after, and we understand everything kind of, you know, gets, there's a log jam until the budget is done, but we really hope that that one can move. Yeah, I was, uh, this last week, I was actually a little bit surprised, just, uh, I'll use the word pre-budget, I thought we would be just inundated and had, have a lot of um, um, uh, work to be done, if you will, and bills to be had. And I mean, we did 10. And, and so now, I, you know, and, and this next week is, of course, you know, the crunch for budget. And then what I was informed is then afterwards, it's like a log jam. I get that just gets broken up and everything comes through. So um, I do have this under uh, um, scrutiny with me. And, um, and again, I didn't see anything in it uh, that I could not, uh, that I could not support. So um, you can, you can count me as uh, uh, supporting that moving forward as well. That's great. Really appreciate that. Um, so uh, perhaps we could um, go to the public safety issues that, um, that Henry is involved in that we're all we're all really involved in right now. But on your list here, are a couple of different things. Um, <clears throat> you're aware of raise the age, of course, that legislation. Um, I don't know if Otsego County ran into the kind of problems we've had with trying to find beds for young people. Have you, I don't yes, know. It was, it was a huge issue. Um, and, and our jail being an aged um, facility did not lend itself very well for that. So again, I, I think it was a, it, 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 the unintended consequences of what goes on is, is again, uh, sometimes frustrating. It was, um, um, I think it was noble in its in its initial concept, but um, it, it posed us a lot of issues at, at, in Otsego County when they did raise the age. I, I, you can expand upon what what how how it affected you guys. I would imagine about the same, or yes. Yeah, yeah Lisa, go ahead. Do you want to? Yeah, it, it's still affecting us, and uh, similar to Otsego County, we in Tompkins don't see a lot of um, that fit these criteria, but when we do, there's an urgent need for a bed. And um, right now we have no um, specialized secure facility in Tompkins um, to send these, these youth to. And the regional facilities, um, say Syracuse or um, elsewhere, they're full. And OCFS, um, so, and a lot of the larger counties have contracts with these, um, these facilities. And so they're paying for the beds, whether they're full or not. So if, um, so, so when we have a need, we cannot find beds. Um, and so secondly, we were working with an 11 county region 
uh, and OCFS to try to build a facility to to meet the needs, you know, smaller facility to, to meet the needs of uh, our region. And um, OCFS has put a halt to that. So we can't build a facility, nor can we find beds when we need them. And um, and the the facilities are under no obligation to release those beds to others. So we're we're really between a rock and a hard place, and we cannot we cannot meet the mandate for this. We've had occasions where we've had youth uh, that are um, have committed really serious offenses, um, a danger to themselves and others, and they had to sit in the sheriff's office in the administrative portion under his custody for two or three days until we've been able to find a, a, a suitable bed for them. And this, this just keeps happening. It doesn't happen for months at a time and then it can happen. So um, we're really in um, a need for a solution here working with OCFS. Or you know, Lisa, I, 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 when we can, um, and, and hopefully sooner than later, uh, when I can get out that way, I'd really like to sit down and, and come up with a, a relief valve concept for this thing. I, I mean, and again, this is just taking the bottom up approach. I mean, uh, so much of it is, is thought of and, and, and then pushed through from a top down and they don't realize what it means, you know, at the main street level view of what we have to deal with. So, um, yeah. you know, coming out there, I, I, you know, let's put our heads together. And, you know, my dad always had a saying, he always said, you know, when you come with an issue, if you don't come with a solution, you're whining. He hated whiners. <laughs> So I want to come back with, with with just the reverse of that, saying like, all right, so we've identified the issue. It, it is because in Otsego, it's the same, same almost verbatim what we're dealing with. And 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 I can reach out again to uh, Rich Devlin, our sheriff and stuff, get some of that uh, better input. But come together and let's let's offer up a, you know, a, a relief valve is what I call a concept. And uh, yeah. And who knows? I mean, at least we can say, you know, we, we're, we're addressing it and we're trying to, to, to better this, uh, this issue. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. And I've asked what our best solution is for right now. And I think from our perspective, it would be if OCFS could hold these facilities accountable to um, open the beds when, um, when there's a need. Because right now it's not that the beds are filled, they are, they're empty, yeah. you know, they're, they have yeah. vacancies, yeah. but they're, yeah. they're being paid for. So the facilities don't have any incentive to take someone in when they're already being paid for the beds. Um, and OCFS right. isn't holding them to do that. So that, that would be at least- That'd be a huge step, I agree. Yes, yeah. I, I agree with you. Okay, good. Geez, I was quick. Uh, I'm not used to yeah. such efficiency. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Lisa, in other words, you're saying, the idea of building a facility was one idea, but that's not even necessary. It may not be. I mean, there, if they could open these beds when, when there's a need, um, and we can see from there, if they start doing that and then there aren't enough right. beds available, there still may be a need for a facility. But, you know, right now we just, we can't even get a bed. <coughs> We're Lisa, I'll that. bring up just something that quick, you know, we had talked about, and this was just very preliminary. So there was the old Camp Summit uh, up in Schoharie County, which is, was, was a, a shock facility, closed yeah. down, just yeah. closed yeah. down. I mean, there, and, and that facility there could be retrofitted so quickly, and, and, and it, would, it would have the same effect I think we're talking about. So again, it was just something that, you know, it's like, here it is. It can be done, but it, yeah, it just yeah. takes a little bit. But anyway, I throw that out as just again planting a seed. So, sure. Yeah, we we had a facility like that in Schuyler County. Yes, and we were working with OCFS and considering it, and then they, yeah, yeah, they, they opted not to move forward. So I think um, those are some things to 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 uh, consider. Anyway, so. sure. Thank you. Sure. So. Um, I think then, then maybe let's uh, the the reimagining public safety initiative that that we really, uh, you know, we spent a great deal of time on with with the whole community with the city of Ithaca. Um, there are many internal decisions that we have to make, but there are a number of them that go back to the state re regarding hiring, retention, discipline, and um, 
Henry's been very involved in this in this initiative too, as vice chair of our public safety committee, um, Lisa as well. So if one of you wants to talk about the the personnel issues and the, the civil service issues that we're looking looking at. Sure, I can take it. Um, yes, we're trying to reimagine public safety. And so we're trying to figure out ways to, to bring in a more diverse uh, workforce. And one of the things that, that really is preventing us is the civil service exam. We know a couple of years ago, um, the WC, WDIC committee, which I'm chair of this year, looked into it, presented a nice plan to the state, and then nothing happened. And so what we're doing is we're revising that and saying, okay, can we have a pass-fail um, system on the civil service exam mm -hmm. about that? And so, you know, so people can take the exam, they can pass or fail, and then they'd all be eligible to get more people in the hopper to, in fact, diversify the, um, the force. Um Henry, I, I, yeah, have, have you got uh, the ability to, could you forward that to, to my office here? Uh, I, I'm not familiar with what uh, basic, I know you just said it's a pass fail, but I mean, it, it, there's gotta be a little bit more to what you proposed. Um, yeah, yeah, the civil service then is, is now, they take what the top two, the top yeah. three test takers. Yep. Yep. So we're asking for having it a pass fail exam. And we don't say where the pass rate should be, but again, having a pass fail, so we'd include more people in the process. Are you sure I can send you something about, yeah. about our if, request? If you could, that would be excellent. And you know, so the thing that always, whenever I come across these things on any level, it is always like, well, if we do for one, we have to do for the other kind of, kind of that. So in other words, let's not do it at all, right? I mean, that's, that's always the way that this, this argument is structured. And, you know, I can go back as chair of public works and, and just trying to find, uh, you know, people to come in uh, at a county level uh, and, and waiting for um, um, just to get, like you say, a, a um, you use the word hopper, I would say just a pool of, uh, you know, participants. So yeah, I don't see where a pass fail uh, initially would, would, would be unappreciated, right? As far as that goes. But I'd like a little bit more if you could send that to me, that, that would be great. Okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah, we were proposing, we proposed, we worked with a Cornell uh, graduate class and, you know, worked up a pilot proposal for doing, uh, trying that with our uh, social services department. And we were just told, given flat, flat out, no, the system is just fine. Thank you very much. Um, now, Henry and I are on the NISAC by, uh, Public Safety Committee as well. And we, we did pass a resolution out of NISAC supporting this idea of going to, you know, maybe at least a, a band of five or, or pass fail. Um, to open open up the um, um, the system some. Lisa, did you want to add something to that? No, I think you guys covered it. Mm -hmm. well, well, the one thing that we can be assured of is people don't like change. <laughs> especially the civil service system. You know? uh, it, right. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to get real philosophical, but it was funny. I, 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 there was another one, and it just popped into my head, and it, and it says, you know, when the winds of change blow, some build windmills some build walls. And it was so appropriate, you know, to, to, when you hear it like that, that it really does give you that visual, right? Some are willing to work with the change and then others are just dead set against it. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I would love to see, Henry, if you could send that to me and, and maybe there's a way to, you know, to start to change those winds of change, so to speak. I just wanted to add, and, and I think it's very obvious, but it just, you know, it, it just skews uh, uh, us being able, only being able to hire people who are good test takers. Sure. So it's just not, not fair. Thank and, you. And Annie, you're right. I mean, uh, you know, and, and I, I will put myself in that, you know, I was, a, I was a terrible test taker. Me for too. For whatever reason. And, you know, when I took it, D meant done and I was happy with it. So uh, I, I fully agree with you. You know, it isn't giving us uh, a, a broader spectrum of, uh, of um, experiences, I'll, I'll use that word, right? It really isn't, so. Lisa, I wanna uh, just add in together with that, the um, another recommendation that we were uh, putting forth 
around civil service is continuous recruitment. And that is, you know, being able to, um, to continuously recruit for both law enforcement and corrections positions. Um, because, you know, having the test being given at only one time during the year and then the lists get old and stale. Um, it, it, and then police academy training comes up. Um, so it would be just better to be able to continuously recruit throughout the year and have applicants be able to submit and, and test throughout the year. And it's also something that's in practice at the state, uh, in New York State with uh, Department of Corrections, they're doing it. So, uh, you know, to be able to do it on the, the county level, the local level would be really helpful. You know, you, and again, I think you're right there. That, that could be a huge um, um, advantage. Again, you know, having said on public safety in Otsego County, you know, the time and the investment that goes into before our COs even step foot into their first day on the job, um, you know, uh, downstream, our, our, our sheriff was coming to us and, and you know, we were, t we were understaffed for such a long period of time because he always says we're waiting for a test. I, I mean, by the time we go through the test, the, the psychological evaluations and everything else, I mean, it's, it's, I fully agree with you there. I, I, I think we could get behind that. And that makes total sense. Yeah. Total sense. Um, let me, let me jump to, um, there's, there's one on here on the list here that might be um, a little mysterious, Medicaid FMAP reconciliation. Maybe as a county official, you know what that was. Um, the, um, as you know, New York State is, is really the only state where, where counties pay a meaningful amount of, uh, of the Medicaid program. Um, under the afford, when the Affordable Care Act was instituted uh, at the federal level, um, Senator Schumer in particular made sure that there was, um, uh, that funding was supposed to come, the share of ACA funding was supposed to come to counties that was um, uh, proportional to what they were paying. Right. New York State initially calculated that share correctly, but then the last, in the last four years, they have just declined to calculate it. And actually they do calculate it, they just don't tell us and they haven't been paying the money. Um, so in, the, uh, in your packet of attachments, we, um, we, they had been saying that they didn't calculate it. And then we did learn that in fact, of course the Department of Health calculates it and sends the, dot, sends the amount to the division of budget. So our county administrator issued a, a FOIL request. Yeah. Um, we would like to know how much that is. Thank you very much. Um, the FOIL was denied, the request is, was denied. Um, and you also have his appeal letter. So um, that's one of, those, one of those just simple fairness issues. It's, you know, it's money that the federal government intended to go to the state, to the counties and it's, it's being withheld. And I don't know if that's anywhere in the budget discussions. Um, NISAC always has it on, on their list as well, but it seems like it may be sort of handled off budget. I don't know. Um, Martha, I believe you're right, because I, I haven't really heard anything about it at this point. Um, although I, I was actually surprised as I read that to, to see that your FOIL request was denied. Um, I am actually um, going to bring this up through um, my committee, you know, being on uh, uh, on health, and and uh, I, I won't go that uh, the Department of Health has had some other um, is is um, uh, distracted, I guess, at the time, <laughs> and 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 to be able to hide behind that curtain of saying, well, you know, we we're kind of distracted is is to me again unacceptable, but. Um, no, I, I will. Um, I will start to look into this from my level, and see if I can at least get an an adequate answer uh, at this point. But I, I was actually, when I read that, I was actually, um, I was surprised. I, I must say, I was over a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let, let me let me tell you something right that you don't know. I, I fully. Yeah. It, um, you know, it's it just it's, it'd be again, just a ministerial act. What's that? It ought to be just a ministerial act. Here's the formula. Here's how much. 
Well, you know, again, as a, as a former supervisor, you know, I, I always said the phantom two uh, percent tax cap, right? I I, uh, I I always said to my to my constituents, if I raise my my taxes two percent, I'm actually exceeding the cap. I mean, with the formula and the algorithm they give us, uh, why can't it just be? I know why, but I mean, let, let's let's be honest. It would be so much easier if everything was just streamlined, and it is simply just a, a mathematical calculation, not uh, some algorithm that takes. Uh, the reason I failed physics was because I wasn't good at it, you know, at it. So anyway. Uh, well, I no, appreciate, yeah. I very much appreciate you bringing this up in committee. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we would be delighted to, to provide more information. Um, and it's millions of dollars to us. Sure. Um, and it's certainly, it's going to be, you know, across the state. That's, that's a lot of money. And I understand that's probably why the governor has done it, but that's not, legal it, it's really it's written into the law that that those shares sure. are supposed to come to counties so we really appreciate your your checking into that that yeah i i will uh, like i said i mean they're telling me next week it's basically it's crunch hour for budget uh and i understand uh and i don't know i know we have scheduled a, a health committee meeting but they may uh, uh it's just every you know every week it's on an automatic uh, basis but um uh, for sure, once I can get the attention of uh, Chairman Rivera, I will uh, uh, bring this to his attention and, and see if we can't get, uh, I'll use the word, make some noise and see what happens. Sounds great. And I, it affects New York City too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and by the way, any of your other counties, if they want to just copy the FOIL request, feel free. Well, it's funny you should say that because now I'm, I'm going to reach out to that seagull and just kind of say, hey, just out of curiosity, you know, and uh, see what see what comes back from uh, Alan, uh, 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 our treasurer there, and uh, just see, see what he's got to say. It'd be kind of interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, if they got suddenly got 62 of these, I think that might, be, I mean, <laughs> Isaac is looking into that. Too. So thank you very much. Sure. Um, we should talk, you're also, um, the ranking member of alcoholism and substance abuse. So Henry walked into this Zoom, into this meeting saying, hey, did you hear about the marijuana deal? So is that is that being discussed in your committee at all? Or is that under health or public safety? Or where is that? It's actually being more or less discussed out, even outside the budget at the moment. Um, and I have heard so many different things that uh, at this point, I, 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 all we hear is that it's being discussed. I haven't, I'm not, it's not being discussed to me um, or, you know, and, and what we do get is, is usually filtered. And, you know, you remember the old game, what was it? Uh, telegraph or whatever you say one thing, oh, here, by the, right? By the time it gets down to where I'm at, it has changed, you know, a threefold. So um, I, I uh, in fact, this morning, you know, we had like 80 some emails of which probably uh, Sixty percent of them are, are what's going on with this. You know, local municipalities, towns, villages. What happens if one opts out? The county. What if the county opts out and the village doesn't? You know, uh, sales tax. You know, housing district. You know, all of this stuff is is just flying around at at speeds. And I, I'll be honest with you, I I don't know. I, I'll just say right now, I really don't know. Although my my job is to find out, and so I'm hoping. Uh, if I hear of anything, I, I've got uh, a bunch of my, my counties, uh, you know, on, on uh, my uh, group text, if you will, or group, uh, you know, email. As soon as I find out, I will throw that, that information out and we can discuss it. But uh, Yeah, the New York Times is reporting that it's a, it's a done deal, that um, there'll be a 9% state tax and a 4% local tax. But then we read something yesterday, the county's only going to receive 25% of that 1% tax, which is what, <laughs> and they said, they said that they're going to, pass, they're going to maybe, maybe pass it next week. Henry, those are the numbers that I've heard <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, and, and now I know, now you know why I'm being inundated with uh, a bunch of emails, I'm sure, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so we've heard the same thing. It's a done deal. They're just working out logistics. Now, um, from the assembly side, uh, uh, the majority leader has got COVID, so he's right. you know, and and now we're allowing staff to do so. Again, there there is just 
Boy, to say um, it's the eye of the hurricane, it's it's truly, you know, the eye of the hurricane. But um, as that information comes forward and as things truly get nailed down, I will um, um, I will keep you all as, as well as I can informed and in the loop. <clears throat> and like I was talking to uh, Jim Bono from um, Herkimer, and so his question to me was, okay, so if we want to opt out as the county, but you know, a village or a town or whatever opts in. Um, does that mean then that we forfeit our right to, you know, th those are all questions and, and valid questions and concerns. I said, Jim, at this point, I don't know. So um, okay. I hope to, those are questions that I hope will, will come out. But. You think it might be nice to have some public hearings on it. Uh, <laughs> hey, Mike, good to see you. Mike Sigler, you know, Senator Obracker. Yes, Mike. Hey, uh, here I am. Uh, I was I was looking at it initially, and I said I didn't think you were in your plane, which is a good thing. I don't want you flying and uh, you know talking. At the same all right, too windy, too windy today. Good. I just got my vaccination, so I'm all. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. All right, congratulations. Good. Um, so, well, all right. Well, we'll just keep. I mean, as as I'm sure you can imagine, Senator, we sort of feel like. Um, would you say one percent or a quarter of a one one percent of the sales? <laughs> wholly insufficient as the local government that's governments that are going to have to manage the consequences, whatever they are. We don't know what they'll be, but we're pretty sure we're usually at the bottom, you know, the receiving end of this kind of stuff. Well, and again, you know, there, there are just so many questions that I have. Okay. Um, you know, and, and I mean, we can go right on down through, but like I said, taking the county's perspective. So, you know, again, from a law enforcement side of things, who's going to be dealing with the issues that, that erupt from this? Um, you know, and, and, and I'm dedicating, uh, you know, personnel, time, effort. We know the, the whole, you know, the whole situation there. And, and then what are we getting back to, to kind of help fund, if you will, that, that situation? So um, I, I do, have, I personally have a lot of concerns with it. I, I, I have not been briefed at all. And, and that's disconcerting. I have not been, uh, I look to be briefed and, and then make, you know, hopefully uh, uh, my position um, uh, decision, if you will, onto it. But there, there's just so much that I'm, I guess I could use the word I'm scared. Is, if they, is that fair? You know, I'm scared. I don't really know what they're, what they're really going to come back with. So, uh, Sales tax is so important to Tompkins County. Uh, we were the county that had the greatest loss in sales tax percentage in the state after New York City. Uh, we got really hurt on sales tax and also on our room tax uh, yep. because we are so education oriented with Cornell University and it's a college and, as well as TC3 and, and SUNY Portland, not very far away. Right. Uh, and, and we've been hurt very, very badly. And then when uh, we have these issues of uh, rating our uh, what sales tax we do have for the hospital fund or rating that for the AIM funding. Yep. Uh, that is particularly hurtful to Tompkins County. And I realize some of the other counties didn't uh, experience as much of a loss as we did. But I just wanted you to be aware of, of how hurtful it's been to us. And again, Michael, as a former, uh, you know, uh, county legislator, I, believe me, and, and in Otsego County being driven by our bed tax and uh, our sales tax and due to uh, tourism is our really, I mean, that's how we've been able to keep our, our uh, you know, our tax um, in line, if you will. Um, it, it, it was a huge, it was a huge impact on us as well. And I think our bed tax was down about 50%. If I'm oh, mistaken. wow. We weren't that bad, but wow. No, yeah. Mike, I think it was down 85%. Oh, I was even worse than I thought. Yeah, it was bad. Um, oh, I mean, you know, and again, it, we, we, tr we, try to, we try to do our budgets uh, uh, reflecting that so we're not uh, putting that burden down, you know, on our, on our taxpayers. And then this comes through, and uh, it, it really did uh, – there was some talk again for, for in, in Otsego with uh, some of my uh, uh, colleagues, former colleagues there that, you know, we need to kind of balance out now and not be so tourism heavy, which is not always a good uh, thing for our taxpayers. But 
as you know, as the county tries to navigate these new waters that we're in, we may be finding that's uh, unfortunately the path that we're going to wind up having to take. Yeah, and just a quick, and if your college said yesterday that they're gonna have a graduation, but no visitors are allowed. And so all the tourism money that we get from people coming in for graduation, we're gonna be gone and Cornell has not announced yet. And so we <laughs> suspect they may announce the same thing. They may have only a virtual graduation with no visitors. And Henry, you know, the part that got frustrating to me, and this appeals more to my business mindset, if you will, is I, I made the comment, I was interviewed uh, yesterday, and I, I made the comment that if, if at uh, 12 or at 114 today, if the governor were to open everything up, we're still two, three months away from anything actually trickling down where people are going to feel because they're going to be like, well, are they going to pull the rug out from underneath me? Do I go ahead and, and plan on you know, this, invest the money? Uh, my uh, uh, Here in Otsego, we have the Dreams Park and the Cooperstown All-Star Village, all those folks that come from all over the U.S. And, and, and the thing that gets frustrating is th these are decisions that we need to make now so that two to three months from now, you just don't open it up and, and everything's good. So... Um, well, but even if you open it up, if people don't feel safe, they're not coming. I, so I absolutely agree. Know, the absolutely only way agree. out is through. So um, it, it's tough. Um, I wanted to, since you're also the ranking member on the Internet and Technology Committee, we wanted to raise a couple of issues uh, that, that were also in your, uh, I believe they were in your packet. Yeah, the, um, the fiber right of way fee. Uh, yes. Uh, Magnarelli, I think, has a uh, an assembly bill. As uh, last last year, um, Senator Helming put put together a bill. Um, we we have a number. Of, you know, we're desperately trying to expand broadband. Um, in particular, we have one very significant project from uh, from the city of Ithaca out to the town of Lansing, and they got a four hundred thousand dollar federal grant. But now with this right of way fee, that may make the whole project unaffordable. Um, so it seems so counterproductive to even have this fee when we're trying desperately to expand broadband. And of course, you're going to use the state rights of way. Um, is this something the committee has talked about? In some very general, and we're starting to have a more in depth. When I when I found out, um, my, my initial when I became your anchor was to say, okay, so if I were to take this as a project, as I would in, in my business, I always say, so where are the where are the stops? You know, where, where are the dams that are stopping this from from point A to point B? And that was one of the first things that they brought to me, which I wasn't even aware of. And I said, you've got to be kidding me, really? That that we're in this sandbox and we have this little part of it over here and they're not going to let you're not going to touch anything within that sandbox to me just I, again I, I i i was stupefied i guess was the way to describe it so um yes we're starting to discuss it and, and uh, you know i don't have it at, at, at my house I, mm -hmm. I don't have broadband service and i'm the ranking member and yes i, I, I read that <laughs> I, I mean you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, if you tried to put it in the, in a script, the Hollywood script, you couldn't script it any better. So, so you go to the library and sit in the parking lot with your laptop too? Oh, well, go to <laughs> we, well. so where, where my office is uh, for, for my business, which is about three and a half miles away, I actually do have it. So I can go down there. But again, it, 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 it really brings home, A, the importance, two, uh, the need, and three, th these stops the, these uh, just insane it's insane I, I don't know any other word to do it so identifying it we, we need to move forward with that we we need to be able to get um uh how should i say it that uh i guess you, you start with dialogue and you try to understand their point of view but to me i'd have a hard time understanding why they won't give us the right of way through those areas so um I'll be working. That, I think that's one of the, the main things I'll be trying to approach and to address uh, as far as broadband service goes. Now, I'll also, I'll say this. I'd also like to look at teaming up, though, with, with cell service as well, because now in, in a lot of the areas that, that I represent, in, in like Delaware County, uh, extremely uh, rural 
and, and hilly and stuff. Uh, it, it is going to be, I think, kind of a dual, potentially dual approach to both uh, what we say, you know, uh, copper or, or, you know, line and, and getting some cell service. So I'd like to look at both of those as, as potential options. Yeah, I agree. There are lots of upstate New York where you, you can't get cell service, cell coverage at all. Yeah. I just want to give you one quick example, like out here, in, in, you know, in a lot of the rural parts of the county, if you have to cross the state road, to get to you know 10 to 20 people to service them yep. that just you know that just throws it out of the water that that they can't afford it the providers and we have a lot of smaller providers that are trying to go in yep. and fill in those areas that spectrum was supposed to have filled in which is a whole nother issue but it, it, they need to they need to at least break even so that this this just makes them not affordable so yeah i just got broadband just this past year and I've been here for 15 years. You know, and then, yeah. I mean, the uh, the educational side there, the e-ed thing with the $15, uh, you know, just again is, is posing so many issues when the, what, what the federal program is $50, uh, if, I, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering correctly, you know, as far as that. So again, you know, I, I think again, you know, it's a noble intention, but I mean, going back to our pro providers and, and those, um, Fifteen dollars. What is that? If you can do do it for that, what are you really getting? What is, what bandwidth are we talking about? I mean, so there's there's a lot a lot going on there. But um, um, that is one of one of my real high priorities is is the broadband issue. Um, well, um, th this particular fee is such a is such a barrier, and you know we you may know about the <clears throat> the, the American Rescue Plan, the federal bill that was just passed, yeah. includes you know flexibility for for municipalities counties and towns to spend money on capital projects, including broadband. And I think that's probably going to be uh, probably a lot of high uptake on that. A lot of, a lot of interest here in perhaps spending some of that money on, on broadband. If the state throws this thousands of dollars a mile fee in the way of this, what, you know, what a terrible waste, uh, uh, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. So if that was, you know, we're not even sure why that was passed. If that was to plug a hole in the DOT budget, well. I think you're probably right on with that, to be honest with you, yes. So our uh, Economic Development Agency, Ithaca Area Economic Development, they sort of brought this to our attention. <clears throat> we're working on that big broadband project to, um, to Lansing. Mm -hmm. uh, I may put, have you met Heather McDaniel? Is she, are I, you familiar with No, I have not. Okay. We may I'll put you in touch with them because you know, she can give you more of the details too. And then just, um, I know we're getting a little close to the to your time here. I wanted to mention um, the point about the FCC maps. I was on a NACO call, National Association of Counties call the other day and the acting um, head of the FCC, I guess chair of the FCC, um, and I can't remember her, Rosenswile or something, um, she came on and she was saying, you know, we among the things she said, and I wanted to clap and cheer. She said, you know, we're going to really have to redo the maps that the FCC is basing. Uh, Henry, were you on that call? No, but I, but I, but I, I've heard it before. <laughs> yeah, she said we're really going to have to redo these maps. They're done a long time ago, and and did you know that they? Um, I, the maps were drawn by census blocks, and if one person, one household or business had had service, then the whole census block was considered to be covered, and that's just had not the, the truth. And had so, the ability to get service. Yes. What? Had the ability to get service. Not that they right. have service, they had the ability right. to get service. So it appears, you know, <laughs> in our minds or read our resolution or a lot of people have been saying this, so um, I am, and I hope that actually, you know, happens. And I hope it doesn't take five years for it to happen. One of the um, interesting parts when when the uh, the governor had said that um, they were uh, there was only like uh, we were at a ninety eight percent right um, rate, right. Of, and and I I would throw my hand up and I will uh, uh, walk across hot coals to say. 
that I, if there's a 2% that doesn't have it, it's in my 51st district for sure. <laughs> I would go that far as to say it, but um, yeah. You know, one of the things real quick too, Martha, we were, we were talking about, and it's not a, it's not a true hundred uh, percent fix, but it was something that was interesting. You know, out here in the libraries, we have the, uh, the mobile uh, libraries, you know, that come through um, the bookmobiles is what, you know, we would call them. And the concept would be to try to see if there couldn't be something in, in some of the rural areas to do the same thing with, with uh, um, just being able to uh, have computer stations within a, within a um, um, within this bus, if you will, and have a set a schedule coming through to the towns, and then also uh, a potential hotspot that would be generated there as well. It doesn't it doesn't uh, totally take care of the issue, but it to me it would be a huge step in the right direction to at least have the service offered, uh, and then to take some of our elderly and actually help educate them too, how to establish a uh, an email, how to basically navigate on a computer and, and those type of things. So mm -hmm. there are some ideas flying around that I have. We'll see where it goes. Um, again, I, I try to have a somewhat of a solution so I'm not whining. You know. <laughs> Good idea. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am happy to, uh, Mike, go ahead. Sigler. So Peter, I, I just, um, Peter, I wanted to ask you though, I mean, we talk an awful lot about broadband and I'm just wondering with Elon Musk putting up Starlink, if there's any discussion at the state level, I just think a lot of people are gonna be priced out of that. So I don't know if that's a viable option, but is there any chat with the, the state that says, you know, maybe we make it an agreement with Starlink so that we could offer basically broadband to the whole state with this new system that's going online. So I mean, he's launching something like. Yep. Yep. I, I actually, I, I did bring that up and um, I had a, a blank stare. That's the only way I, I can explain it. It was, it was just a, like, what are you what are you talking about? And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? What am I talking about? Uh, so uh, the answer is no. It's not. It really hasn't been discussed. Um, it uh, uh, I, the blank stare was was I, I returned for me because I, I I didn't I couldn't believe that they uh, who I was speaking to and I'm, it doesn't matter who at this point really uh, wasn't aware of it. So uh, I think it's an option. Um, I I would like to see you know I'd like to see something like that. I, I mean heck. That, that would that could cure a whole bunch of ills when we look at the complexity of this broadband issue without a doubt without a doubt so probably going to be a very lively committee for you to be on it with uh, everything that's happening now um that is an understatement <laughs> yes it is but i i'm excited about it because like i said if if Boy, can you imagine, just, just imagine this one issue, right? Just this issue, if we could actually resolve it to the point where um, folks here in New York were saying, God, well done, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, wow, that, uh, it, it, would, it would be, uh, it, it would truly be uh, a highlight, uh, I think, for, for us all to be able to say, you know, job well done, so. Um, well, you may. You may know that the town of Dryden is uh, pursuing a municipal broadband project, uh, municipally owned, and that, so that's uh, that's a whole other model. That's that's right in your district, so you might uh, be interested in following that a little bit. See how that. So I've been I've been really you know Dryden keeps coming up a lot. So I, I was very fortunate to be able to go out and visit um, uh, at the at the fire department. Uh, I love the EMS and and fire. Uh, uh, model that you have, I, I being a volunteer firefighter and, and EMS uh, member here in my town. Uh, so I wanted to talk to them a little bit more on how they did this hybrid um, scenario. So that's another good thing. Uh, I was informed about the Dryden Dam uh, for the Dryden Lake issue. I was on with DEC this week and was talking to them about it. So, um, you know, for, for being out in, in, in Tompkins County, Dryden is coming up more and more and more and more, which is uh, Actually, I think a good thing. And so, um, so the sub, the tagline for Dryden uh, in <laughs> by Mike Lane is "Crown Jewel of Tompkins County." So right. 
I think it, it, it definitely yeah. is in the uh, in the top of the crown. I will give you that. <laughs> we have it's a large town. We have a lot of uh, we have two villages and we have several uh, hamlets and uh, we have, we're suburbs for uh, Ithaca and the uh, uh, and Cornell University. We are uh, rural. We have other uh, school districts. We have we have a lot of things and and we've been at the edge of the envelope on so many issues, uh, whether it's uh, fracking or whether it's uh, uh, solar power, uh, the broadband in initiative. Uh, keep your eye on Dryden, because uh, we have people that are interested in, in moving our town for economic development and uh, as a, a great place for people to live. Crown Jewel of District 51. I, I, I cannot argue. I, I, or nor will I. <laughs> How's that? So, um, well, listen, guys, I do want to thank you. I'm at 129. Um, I, I, thank you for your time. Thank you for your input. It's been excellent. I uh, will take what we've talked about um, and, and definitely uh, bring those, uh, you know, those concerns to Albany. And most importantly, when I do hear this information, I will, uh, I will get the information back to, to you folks. And um, uh, I'm looking so forward to getting back out there. Um, and again, um, uh, I want to do some tours. I want to get, you know, uh, TC3, get into Dryden. Uh, there's some more, more of the towns there um, in, in Tompkins that I, I, I'd like to. And I, as a fledgling vineyard owner, uh, I will be going out to Cornell to uh, uh, tap a couple of uh, things from their uh, expertise. So, uh, um, You'll, you'll probably see more of me, which is a good thing. That sounds great. Uh, Senator, who's the, what's the best staff contact for us to, uh, to, for scheduling and for, for all these uh, things? Mira, Mira in my office, who I think you worked through, if I'm not okay. uh, uh, out of my district office, Mira. How, how do you spell her name? Uh, M-I-R-A, uh, Mira, and uh, Gorvanovich, if you want the last name now, if you want me Brittany to has that. it. Br okay. Brittany's right. saying in the chat, our clerk. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Yep. We'll that's, go. Thank that'd be the best. Thank you, Brittany. All right. Terrific. All right. It's a pleasure to talk with you. As always. As always. Thank you all. Uh, stay Thank safe. You. And the only advice I'm going to give you is get out today and get some sun on our face because we're spending way too much time in these Zoom meetings. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you so very much. A great, great pleasure to talk with you. Thanks, Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you all. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.